In this lesson, we're going to talk about protein synthesis. So we're going to go into more detail about what proteins are. So we know that from last lesson, proteins are really created by our genes in our DNA. But what are they? What does it do? Well, what do proteins do? The first thing is proteins have many functions. For example, they can be what we call enzymes. Enzymes are our catalysts. They basically, what they do is they speed up our body's reaction. So for example, we have stomach enzymes that help with our speeding up our digestion. We also have hormones. Hormones are our body's chemical messengers. We also have, for example, we have muscle contractions. We have another one such as structure. So there's, and there's many more than that, but proteins basically make up a lot of our body. But what is protein synthesis then? Protein synthesis is the process of turning DNA information into proteins. So how does it do that? Well, it basically turns what we call our genotype into what we call our phenotype. Well, what does that mean? Well, genotype Genotype is the information in DNA. Phenotype is the trait that will show because of that, for example. So you could contain uh, information in DNA such as information to create skin cells. The phenotype will be the skin cells itself. So how does gene code to proteins? Well, the big thing takeaway here is that we got to know that one gene equals one protein. Okay, so a gene cannot create different types of protein. It can only create one protein. All right, which also means that one protein equals one function. So we cannot have a protein have multiple functions. So we can't have, for example, an enzyme um, be a stomach enzyme, but also make skin cells. It doesn't work that way. So how are proteins made then? Proteins are made using these steps. There's two parts, or two steps. The first step is what we call transcription. The second step is called translation. So what are these steps? Well, the first step, transcription, is turning what we call DNA, our DNA, into mRNA. And then translation is turning mRNA into our what we call amino acids. So we're going to talk more about that in our next lesson. So what is RNA then? RNA stands for ribonucleic acid. And that's where the R, the N, and the A comes from. You could think of it as if they are single-stranded nucleic acids. Sort of you think of it as one side of our DNA strand. Because if you know one side of our DNA strand, you actually will know the other side. Because from our last lesson, you should remember that C always attaches to G and A always attaches to T. So if you know that combination, once you know one side, you know how the other side will always be. So we're going to go into this more in detail in our next lesson. As always, make sure you keep yourself safe and healthy, and I'll see you soon.